What is going on guys, BD1P back here with another speed running video. Today is the can trip challenge. This might be one of the most fun challenges in Isaac alongside delete this and for me personally red redemption. But anyways, there's one major strategy in this run. So this challenge's whole like pull, this, this challenge's whole like theme is that you get temporary items. Every room drops an extra item card for you and when you pop that card you get the item for the remainder of that room. Once you leave that room however, the item and the card both go away. But there is a singular item exploit that works for that, and that is the item Glowing Hourglass. So, my plan for this run was to refresh until I got what I got here is Glowing Hourglass. And then what I wanted to do is hold that, and hopefully super early on find a really powerful item to use to keep myself ahead of the pack. And that is what happened on this attempt right here. Obviously it's not Garden Angel, <laughs> you could ignore that one, but um, my, my whole like resetting policy was like if I if I started with either the box or battery pack or booster pack or glowing hourglass I would go with the rum the reason I would start with booster pack and stuff like that is because those can give you glowing hourglass effects and it's a lot of, and also more cards which could be you know powerful items and right there you see I get tech X that's really really good it's one of those like, one of the, you know what I'm it's a really good item in this game it's a very very fun item and it also happens to be pretty damn powerful so now I was thinking to myself okay I have one extra slot I want to use that slot to find a second powerful item because I don't want to waste my hourglass. And you'll see here, just, you know, this room. So I get battery pack, I drop that on the ground, I see Roid Rage, I pop it, whatever. I see Red Candle, I pop it, whatever. I see Little Loki, I pop it, whatever. Then I see Bloody Lust. And I'm like, Bloody Lust, that's, that's real good. So I walk out of the room, I use hourglass, you can see now on my right side of my screen, I actually have all the items permanently on me. And then right here... I get a second goddamn glowing hourglass. What are the chances of that? And then this room, I get sinus tears and diplopia. So I sinus tears, I diplopia, pick this up, I get number two, and then I get growth hormones. Our second syringe, which was any other syringe we pick up and use in a room, will give a spun for that room. So this is like second floor, or this, is this the first floor or second floor? This might be, I forget, but either way, that's pretty crazy. No, this is first floor, because you just see the end of the, um, the boss fights here. It'll drop a booster pack, which gives you one plus space for your card, as well as uh, three random cards on the ground. So that was one floor. I now have permanent tech X, sinus, tears, and growth hormones, and also roid rage. Don't forget about that. So this run took off pretty fast. Now, I'll spoil a little bit of a, a little bit of something for you for this run. I'll give a little bit of spoiler right now. I don't see another glowing hourglass at all. My power essentially comes from just saving up a bunch of things for a boss fight. And this is where my strategy kind of starts to crumble a little bit. Because I start to think to myself, what's better? Just going fast or picking up cards that could potentially be, we need to go deeper, mom's shovel, uh, you know, give me an AWAS rune. It, it, I could get a lot of power out of these cards that I'm picking up. So I decide to, you know, instead of just leaving cards on the ground and just going for a victory with this build, I decided it's in my best interest to pick up these cards just for the sake of that it could be a powerful item for us. I think wasting one second to pick up three cards is worth it in the long run for those, that potential gain you can see out of that. Um, I, I take up a couple wrong turns here. I also started to realize that now I, I what I really want to find is like a mapping card. So if I find a mapping card, I can carry it to the next floor and get, you know, basically what is a free floor for, you know, direction choosing. For some reason there, I walked over the creep but took zero damage i don't know what happened i think about it just like very thinly threaded the needle on that creep on the ground but either way it works in my favor i'm not going to complain too much obviously but yeah this is like basically what the run is it only goes to mom so it's a pretty fast challenge my depths floors take me a minute because i take like literally in bd1p fashion once again every goddamn wrong turn i swear to god dude edmund made this game against my own psychosis he was like which way would bd1p choose make that boss fight the other way so a bit of a letdown. Now this this is obviously not like the fastest run you could possibly get. I say it in every video, but I reset for hours for all these runs to happen. And once I get at least a semi-decent run, I just go for that one. I don't want to spend my entire life resetting on the cantrip challenge for a good run. You know, I'd rather just go for it and, you know, let the world decide for me. And you know? so here I, I just get some more cards to have some saved up. I pop them all in the boss and make the boss fight a little faster. Kill the Gurglings here, I believe I Crooked Penny and get uh, double cards and double uh, card slot up. My big pull there is I wanted to get... Oh, it didn't, double, wait, it didn't double my card slot? Interesting. I thought in the run that it did, but I guess not. My, my goal with Crooked Penny there was to get double card drops and also have an extra slot to hold those in, but I guess it didn't pan out that way. Oh well. 
But yeah, this is basically, this is the fastest floor, I think, because I, I find the boss very fast. I get mapping is the big thing. I get mapping right there in the form of a treasure map, so I can just use that. But this is a pretty standard run from here on out. Um, I want to know, though, in the comment section, like, what you guys want to see me run next. Uh, people keep saying, like, you know, speedrun getting the lost or speedrun, you know, unlocking tainted characters. Eventually, I will do that. But that's going to take a lot of time because I don't want to do it seedless, but that requires multiple runs to get that done. So I have to find multiple seeds to do that. And then to also, because I can't do it, you know, without having achievements disabled, I have to pretty much mimic it actually happening. And I'd rather not mimic it. I'd rather do it legitimately, but I guess we'll find out when that time comes because, like I said, I, I did the, the Tainted Unlocks on a 30 character run, um, you know, months back on stream, and that run was, like, literally 27 hours long. So I don't want to be sitting here for another 13 hours trying to get three hush kills and kill mother, then go back and do whatever. And also having each of those runs start like with nothing again, I need to find an Arky seed to make that work. And those are very scarce to come by. So if you guys know any like, you know, powerful early game Arky's like seeds, please God, let me know. I need to, what I would need to do on that, that run would be, you know, the shovel and all that stuff. But anyway, this is a, this is a different run. Forget about that. What's happening here is I'm just kind of like cycling through cards. I'm looking for anything powerful. I want what I want to happen is I want to find like a an item that's gonna drop me more cards like the box or like booster packs. I want to just have like I want to see Sacred Heart. I want to see Epic Fetus in my lineup down there for the mob fight. And as it happens, also mapping right there is really big. I thought to myself, I think I'm going the wrong way. I thought I think I'm going the wrong way because you can kind of tell where your boss is going to be by where your map is situated at the beginning of a floor. It's really hard to like get used to looking for that kind of stuff, but if your map is top-centered, if it's like closer to the top than it is the middle, your boss fight is going to be primarily down. Because maps can only be a certain size, and if your room is higher up in that grid, then it can't be over there. So, mapping helps, but you can pretty much infer where a lot of your boss fights are going to be by just... Looking at your map and inferencing, I guess. I, I think I use that tactic next floor um, because I think we are also very top heavy next floor, but we'll see when we get to that point. I'm fighting the adversary here. Again, it's going very, very fast. Uh, yeah, this run was very good. Uh, I'm glad I got this. I tried to speedrun uh, Red Redemption today. I tried to go for ultra hard, but ultra hard strategy is just going to have to end up being co op sacrificing. I don't want to. That's kind of a lame video. I feel like just, you know, hey guys, we can do it, but we got to sacrifice with four co op players. Like, it's a, it's a lame thing, but I guess it's the way it's going to get done. Oh no, we were bottom heavy here. So I started going up because I noticed that we were our map was very bottom heavy. Because you can see, like when I open up the map, but next time I, you'll see, my starting room is situated really, really far down on the map. So I know it has to be up a little bit. It can't go any further down. So I have to be going up. Now I go a little bit too far up and I choose the wrong way. I black heart bomb here on purpose to get through because this room is just annoying me. And I can't tell which is the enemy, which is my friend down there. It's pretty bad. But I get a couple items here. I just pop those all. No, I don't pop them yet. Interesting. Uh, I think I save a lot of those for the mom fight. But yeah, I noticed I'm going way too far, and I'm thinking, okay, it could, it could still be up, maybe. And it was just a shop, and I was like, all right, you're just wasting time. It's, it's to the right for sure. But you can, you can now just see how the map pans out. That's a little, a little small tip. You can definitely tell where your, your, your floor is going to end at or where your special rooms and dead ends are going to be based off of where your map is situated. But this room is pretty big for us. We get um, a couple of card drops here. We get uh, Epic Fetus and Stem Cells. And this room, I believe, we get Sacred Heart in, which is pretty crazy. And that makes the mom fight go by, yeah, it, very fast, very fast. So I mean, whatever, just, just go for it, man. Just rush it through it. Like, bomb every room if you have to, because you have a lot of HP. I should have bombed out of this room, but I thought, like, I was already over on this side of the map. I'll just go for it normally. But I should have I should have definitely bombed here. What am I, like, slightly faster. But I, I think in the heat of the moment, I was kind of just, like, fight the rooms and go through it. So now I go in here, I just start spamming everything, and then I shoot like three tears out, and it just kills Mother. Yeah, it, it, it's a pretty OP build. But anyways, if you enjoyed this run, leave a like and a comment for the algorithm. It helps out more than you guys know. Uh, put down below you want to see me run next. I can be a challenge, I can be an unlock, whatever you guys want to see. But in the meantime, I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace out, and goodbye.